Okay, my friends, this is going to be a journey today. I, um, I'm just going to let it roll. I am going to go through my entire development of starting with the discovery of the mud fossils and the new species and all of the things that I discovered, how soft tissue has turned to stone and how I got deep into the, to, to the biology because I had to. I had to prove these things were biological and that, that that is really a bone and not a stone. And what is the chemistry here? And what is the anatomy? And, what, and then I found that everything had a membrane that surrounded it and that's why these were protected and, and came out of the ground as body parts. They didn't rot, and I know the reasons why uh, for all of this stuff now. I've completely, f fully investigated. I fully understand the process, the biology, the, the anatomy, the whole nine yards. I'm going to go back to the beginning of how I originally discovered the mud fossils and then started to understand the, the anatomy. And then I said, wow, this is impossible. How could this stuff make life work so elegantly and I had I kept going back and back and back till I got into the cell and then I said well how could that cell work how does bi bacteria work how does bacteria save you because probiotics are the things that do save you absolutely no question about it your gut is the thing that is your immune system if you don't digest correctly you have so many a plethora of problems from halitosis which is bad breath to vaginal odor Yes, from gut bacteria. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. And now they realize it. And now they've gone deep inside the cell. And this guy is one of the most fabulous researchers I've ever seen. I'm going to go through his about four minutes of his introduction to how he started to realize how complicated the cell was. He went from being like a strict and, uh, what do you call it, um, evolutionist where everything just just happens to saying no 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 <laughs> that just didn't happen it, and and he's right it just didn't happen that way all right before we start i want you to know this has nothing to do with religion that's at all it has to do with the complexity of life you draw your conclusions i've already drawn mine they, my conclusions have nothing to do with you and yours have nothing to do with me i see biology here I can't explain in any other realm other than some creator created it that's my bottom line that case is closed now let's start looking into the actual biology this is the key that just turns me on to to the top I'm telling you watching this guy is like eating candy I'm telling you it just just thrills me I gotta be honest with you watch this Our machines. They enable us to be creative and produce spectacular structures. We also find magnificent structures in nature, and each of these living structures was also built by machines. Machines that are far more elaborate than anything that humans have ever built. In fact, this log is currently being decomposed by tiny fungi that are vastly more complex than his drone. Now, let me just explain one thing. As he's talking about decomposition, this is out in the environment. My mud fossils did not decompose because of the fact that they were in a hot salt water flood. And it basically cooked them, and all of the bloody tissue ran off to form mud and clays and embedded in those wet muds and clays these body parts such as such as this DNA tested human lung and they came out be because of fascia and pleura this is going to come into we're going to talk about this a lot because this is where your your um, immune system lives is, is, is in this layer right here which is the fascia and that's that's what I discovered and that's how I really started Nobody knew anything about it. Nobody absolutely. They they called it fuzz. They just said, "Oh, that's just like a little coating of fuzzy stuff that's on it." We we just get rid of it. They did, and they, I worked with one of the top, well, two basically of the only two best and top fascia specialists in the world, and they were the only ones I could find in the world that knew anything about fascia. 
And I'm going to go into them too. There's Gil Headley and uh, Robert Schleif. Gil is an, an anatomist, PhD, all that stuff, and he teaches anatomy and, um, and knew about the fascia. And he did a video in 2009 called, um, what's something about fascia? Um, or what, what's, what's the fuzz or something like that? Because that's what they called it, fuzz. <laughs> they didn't even know what it was. And it, it actually just, just a new in 2018, they said, well, we just discovered this stuff. It's called interstitium. <laughs> and this is where the bacteria runs all through your body through that layer of this stuff right here just this layer right here not underneath just that layer and that's where the bacteria zip, just goes flying through there delivering its goods and now I figured out it's guided by magnetism this is just stunning the 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 pace of the development of the understanding of of this probiotic bacteria that's in your body. That's why you're seeing everything about probiotics now. And I've been recommending them for years, and, and they work. Now, he's talking about the things that we never see, bacteria that do everything, literally everything. I'm Mike Behe. Welcome to the unseen world of organic micro-machines. Every living thing in the world is made of cells. Microbes are single-celled organisms. Advanced life forms have trillions of cells. Inside a cell is a bustling operation of interconnected molecular machinery so sophisticated it would put any modern high-tech factory to shame. This intricate machinery is what gives the cell its remarkable abilities to process energy, execute genetic instructions, and replicate all with unbelievable efficiency. I'm a biochemist, a scientist who studies the molecules of life. There has never been a more exciting time to be a life scientist. This is a golden age of discovery in molecular biology. Stunning. This is the layer right there that I'm studying. That's the layer of fascia. One side is where the bad stuff is. The other side is where your good stuff is. If you, you can only let the good stuff in to service your good stuff. You can't let the bad stuff in. This is where the bacteria live, right in this layer right here. And they deliver mucus, which keeps slime on there so that your stuff can't get through. And if it does get through, they deliver enzymes and catalysts, which are chemistry bombs. And they explode, and, they, and I'll show you how they do it. They attach magnetically. <laughs> That's what I just discovered. I'm telling you, this turns me on like you, you can't even believe. Breakthroughs in our understanding of the most fundamental unit of life, the cell, have been coming faster and faster. Boy, you ain't lying. My own view of the cell took a turn years ago. I was in a lab at the National Institutes of Health doing postdoctoral research. I was discussing the origin of life with a fellow postdoc. I want to just cut in here because he's going to talk about, oh, we just figured everybody knew everything about everything. No, nobody knows anything about anything. All they do is mimic what they have been told to say. He's a thinker. That's just, that, that is so rare, it's unbelievable. And he's able to talk about it openly because he's in that realm now and he's got some very very good research but if you're not in that realm and accepted you're just pushed aside they won't ever listen to anything and I got a feeling he's probably not well received if he starts to go against anything that anybody else is saying that's above him and I don't know who is above him because he's to me I don't think there's many people above him here goes as she and I thought about the cell we wondered how could its complex membrane, proteins, metabolism, genetic code, how could all that have formed by the accumulation of undirected changes? Evolution, undirected changes is evolution, just bumping into things and all this stuff comes, come on. So we were both sort of stunned by the notion, but then we just laughed it off. We figured that even if we didn't know the answer, somebody must know. Well, in the 10 years after that, I didn't come across any science publications that adequately answered the nagging question, exactly how did the cell get to be so complex? 
everything I read presumed that those biological mysteries would eventually be solved by Darwin's theory of evolution. Being an evolutionist myself, that was fine with me. Then I came across a book titled Evolution, a Theory and Crisis by a geneticist, Michael Denton. It addressed profound problems with Darwin's theory. It asked hard questions about the origins of life. And it showed that science didn't have the answers. No matter that everyone assumed it did, or assumed that it would eventually, or something. I was flabbergasted by the book. I began to look at biology with a fresh set of eyes. And I started asking questions. Lots of questions. That's what this series is about. Asking questions. Not about the why or when, but about the how of biological origins. Exactly what I do. And this guy is so good. Michael Bay. I, I recommend you watch everything he does. Okay, he's, this guy is right on target. I'm telling you right now, I am impressed. So, who is this mind? One thing we know is that it must be phenomenally intelligent to be able to design life. What's more, a mind is at least as intelligent as its work has shown. It's likely much more intelligent. But it's clear that errors do occur in nature. Babies are born with birth defects. Good people get cancer. Now, this is where we come in with the bacteria research that I've been doing. And I think I understand exactly why babies are born with defects and people do get cancer. I think I have a very good answer to that. And, and I want a little discussion about it because it, it could save a Oh, just a, a ton of money on on um, medical costs and save a ton of suffering. Why? As I said earlier, I count myself among those biologists who think that science alone may not be able to answer the question of who or why. Perhaps philosophy and theology are needed for that. But the identity of the designer is a separate question. That's exactly the point. It is a separate question. I deal with material, physical evidence. Nobody's going to ever realize, figure out how it all started. This is impossible. It's here. Let's see what's here. That's my point of view. The bottom line is that just like those travelers encountering Mount Rushmore for the first time, we can see the evidence. If we carefully study it, we can know with certainty that life was designed by a mind. If you knew how elegant the tendons and muscles are and all of the attachments and the interaction of everything to make everything work so elegantly, it's, it's, it's really insane to think that this just happened by molecules bumping into one another by accident. Okay, now he's going to go into purposeful design. All of this stuff was designed for a purpose, and changes were changed because situations change, and it's built in purposeful design is built in to the genetic makeup of every creature it can change depending upon the circumstances it finds itself in it's not instant but it does change and that's what evolution is now listen to this the purposeful design of nature was nearly universally held common knowledge for millennia some thinkers, such as the philosopher Aristotle, believe that purpose was built right into nature. Others, such as Galen, the esteemed physician in Rome, thought that purpose had been added to nature. But almost everyone, educated or not, religious or not, 
realized that life was intentionally designed. Going beyond biology, other fields have acknowledged purposeful design through the ages. Astronomy, chemistry, and physics all reveal arrangement and order. Science took a detour from that strong consensus when Charles Darwin proposed random, unguided evolutionary causes. Now we know that Darwin was right for the case of small changes in life. But the void of evidence for large, random evolutionary changes supports the enduring consensus of purposeful design. All right, and very, very difficult to disagree with that unless you're very, very educated. Okay, for me, looking into bacteria is primarily about health. He's also looking into bacteria and the evolution of our species and everything in general. Like, he, he claims that brown bearers had a certain set of genes and they broke one of them so that the brown could no longer be, be made and it turned into a white bear, which is a polar bear. Now, and he knows exactly which gene it was, and he's talking about dogs and all those different species being changed, but they never upgrade. They always break something to create a new species. That's not evolving upwards. That's just changing what is there right now. It's just like like um, putting a new leather seat on here instead of fabric. That's all. It's just changing what is there to be a little bit different, but not the whole brand new species. Now watch this, which is evolution. DNA. They only make changes to existing ones. A mutation is more like disabling your GPS. It may help to save your battery, but it doesn't add a new function. See, no new feature. We're told that random mutation is the main driver for evolutionary change and that evolution is responsible for lower forms being upgraded to higher ones. Yet the latest scientific results show new species are made by breaking genes, by devolution, not evolution. Devolution. Is there another piece of the puzzle that we're missing? Is there some unknown some X factor that boosts the capacity of evolution to gradually generate higher and higher life forms. I'll let you think about that for a bit. Yeah, let me think about that. If, if it's breaking things to create changes, that's not increasing getting your brand new arm or something. And you have three arms instead of two. This is what they're talking about from single cells to us, just accidental. I, I, I don't buy that at all. I don't know if you do. Okay, I'm just going to let him finish up, and you should go up and watch his stuff. The guy is good. In this short series, we only scratched the surface of the topic of the elegant, purposeful arrangement of the parts of the cell, and how that points so strongly to a mind. But the discussion continues on the series website. Please go there for a deeper look at these topics. Finally, thanks for watching this series. I hope it has expanded your own appreciation for the elegance and design of nature. It has mine, my friend, and I thank you greatly.